the invisible account is in the father's authority, is in the father's possession. And he made this account before he created you. Before you ever took on a body and operate as a soul on earth, God had this account already established. It's not something that he just made or he's trying to build up or trying to find support in. It's already established. The minister of finances is an angel. I'm actually doing a book on the minister of finances and you'll, you'll hear more about it in my book. But the minister of finances is a agent that God has entrusted over his financial affairs. Minister of finances is over other financial angels, other money angels that have an assignment and an agenda to release God's glory to the earth, to showcase his provisional power, his provisional prosperity. Prosperity angels are like pros prosperity policemen. If you're taking notes, write that down. If you're taking notes, write that down. Prosperity angels are like prosperity policemen. So the same way we got policemen on earth, the same way we have uh, the authority of police officers and sheriffs, prosperity angels are like policemen in the spirit. They come to execute God's financial laws and they come to deal with those that's obeying God's financial laws. Listen to me, listen to me. They are carriers of the money cometh agenda of the father. They are carriers of the rules, the statutes, the legislation of God's financial kingdom, how his kingdom works and who works his kingdom is included in their ministry. Your abundance in this life is coming from another world. That's why you got to tap into the laws of this other world. Because you're going to see it in this world. But its origin is another world. And so even this world will not confirm its activity. But when it's all said and done, this world will be viewing what you unlocked. This invisible account. Apostle Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This greater than Forbes. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches. And so obviously Apostle Paul comprehended that there are two different displays of riches. There's the riches that you see in this world realm, but then there's a riches in the heavenly realms. You remember in Ephesians chapter two, how he made you to sit in the heavenly places. Now saints, think about it. These same heavenly places uh, 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 a part of these heavenly places is Isaiah 45, 3, the hidden riches of secret places. Well, guess what? Where the secret places at? It's, it's, it's linked to the heavenly places where you've been made to sit. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches. So the father has his own riches 
His riches is not a slave to your current problem. His riches is not a victim, nor it is it's not subject, subjecting itself to your current income. The invisible count is a reserve amount of money, a limited amount of money that God, he holds on to it to pour it out on you at the appointed time. When I was coming up in the financial anointing, I wanted a lot of money, but I knew it wasn't time for it. Because there are some things you have to learn. You got to learn how to manage your generosity. You want to help everybody out. And, and then God has to give you wisdom and recognize everybody that whining to you is not whining to you because they are your assignment. They're whining to you because they want you to protect their stupidity. You had to learn that. Do you know that there's people that's going to come to you that want you to protect their stupidity? That your generosity needs understanding and Holy Spirit guidance because every problem you haven't been anointed by God to solve, even if it comes to you. Saints, did you know that you dissolve stress when you recognize what problems you're not anointed to solve. The invisible account, it is reserved riches, reserved money that God wants to give to you and surprise you at the right time. The Lord will stretch you in sowing He'll stretch you in honor. He'll let you honor him for a time frame. And it'll look like God not studying what you're doing. And he's studying it all along. Saints, I, I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing, as a matter of fact, there's nothing more exciting to me than sowing a seed and playing ping pong ball with God. Because you done threw out your hit. And you waited for him to throw out his. And you know that his hit is way bigger than yours. And saints, there is a lottery in the Lord. Wow. There is a lottery in the Lord. Satan didn't create this lottery uh, uh, gimmick because Satan was an inventor. Satan was just copycatting the kingdom of heaven system. There's a lottery in the Lord. And guess what? The lottery in the Lord, it works through this invisible account. And it happens for the person that has chosen to trust God financially. Saints, like I was saying just a minute ago, I wanted money, but I knew it wasn't time for that because I knew there were some things that uh, I was going to learn. And there were some things that I was going to be taught. And so I understood that it wasn't my time to have plenty of money. And so even though I wanted a lot of money because I wanted to get out of the situation I was in, I didn't want that wasn't my preference to live with nobody. It wasn't my preference to stay in a hotel room. It wasn't my preference to um, have to humble myself and depend on other people to get me around. It, it wasn't my preference, but yet it was a part of the process to be fully armed mentally for supernatural increase. It was a part of the process. So even though it wasn't comfortable, it was still Christ-like. Oh my God. Just think about that. The flesh liked to demonize what's uncomfortable. The flesh liked to demonize what's awkward. When awkwardness is evidence of glory falling, 
Awkwardness is evidence of glory falling. Saints, it got real awkward when Jesus was in the presence of those people teaching them for three days. It got real awkward. But see, glory was falling. He said, I can't send these people away. What, we, what shall we do to feed them? Remember? Because glory falling. See, they was awkward because they was hungry. King Jesus was awkward because he had an invisible account that he was about to minister to them out of. So everybody is awkward. And then he asked Philip and asked the disciples, where are we going to find food to feed these people? So everybody awkward. The people awkward because they're hungry. Jesus awkward because he got a reserve account, invisible account that he itching to unveil to them. And the disciples are awkward because they feel the pressure of the supernatural demand that King Jesus pinned on them. They feel the pressure of it. See, uh, sometimes you got to recognize where you at. Because sometimes you could be in the realm of the disciples where God put in pressure on you to work the kingdom of heaven. He put in pressure on you to be a sower. He put in pressure on you to honor him financially. You got to recognize when God is asking you what we going to do. Because I done gave you the power to get wealth. My old, oh, I ain't never, I don't think I ever preached this like this. I don't think I ever. Well, 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 well. He will do a new thing, Isaiah 43. He'll put pressure on you. What we gonna do? You okay with your finances like that? Is you at peace with that? You believe the job that you got is all that I got for you? You believe that's all the job that I put you to work at? You think I got a bigger job than that? Saints, listen to me. I'm talking to you about the invisible account. Now, saints, there's a mystery to the invisible account because the Lord on purpose, he want to develop faithfulness in a sower. Because if you keep on getting miracles, your faith not really growing. As a matter of fact, your faith becomes weak if you don't have a time to exercise patience. The strength of a farmer and the confidence of a farmer, a sower, which is a farmer and a sower is the same, is that they have to develop confidence in the activity of their seed, the dominion of their seed, the sovereignty of their seed. The same way Jesus was a seed that was sown by the Father, and Jesus is sovereign, and Jesus was the seed. You got to recognize that your seed it has a some it has a sovereignty to it. The sower must recognize the seed that I sow; it has a sovereignty to it. So there's nothing that the enemy could do to stop this seed that I did sow from coming back to me as a harvest. So God on purpose will have you learn faithfulness in sowing. And that's where time come in. As long as the earth remain, there'll be seed, time, and harvest. The reason why he picked time, because time not only lets you see the hearts of other people, it lets you see your heart. And, and now you could do heart uh, triple bypass surgery. Why we say triple? Because we need three persons to captivate this heart. You got to get a revelation of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Triple bypass surgery. Because somebody right now on this line, triple bypass surgery. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. See, you got to get that triple a part of the equation of your heart. They got to rule your heart. And you cannot put your confidence in this world. I think that's Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse five. 
that said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I think that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. That said that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men. Yeah, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 5. Your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Man's wisdom is submit to famine. Be afraid of what's happening in the world. That's the wisdom of the men. Wisdom of men says, look at the wars. Wisdom of men say, look at jobs. Wisdom of men say, look at finances. Wisdom of men say, look at credit scores. That's all wisdom of men. But when you put your faith in the power of God, the, even the power of God has another wisdom that enters into your heart. Now let's look at what happens in Proverbs chapter two when wisdom enters your heart. Let's look at it. In verse 10, it says, when wisdom entereth into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. Look at verse 11. It says, discretion shall preserve you. So Proverbs chapter two, verse 10, say when wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant into your, uh, unto your soul, uh, verse 11 says, chapter two, Proverbs, it says that discretion shall preserve you. And understanding shall keep you. Now, saints, preserve and keep are both hedges from the Lord. That means that is a protection scheme from God, from Jehovah God. That means that the world and what's going on in the earth realm and what's going on in nations and what's going on in the economies of the earth, it won't be able to access you. God is hiding you, Psalm 91, underneath the shadow of his wings. So you don't have to watch the news all day to find out what's going on in the world because none of that stuff is going on with you. You in another zone, you in a wealth zone, a prosperity zone, an abundance zone, an increase zone, a money cometh zone, supernatural money moving zone. You in the Abrahamic zone. You notice wisdom got to enter into your heart. So this is what 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5 does. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. See, when your faith stands in the wisdom of men, your faith stands in the wisdom of men, but it's really translated as fear, anxiety, stress, worry, cares. When your faith stands in the wisdom of men, you live in mental torment because men they they only could steal and rob they not blessed so even the mindset of men is from the mindset of a thief and thieves don't have divine protection thieves are stuck to fend for themselves and be paranoid if you ever met a thief, like somebody that robbed banks, they're very paranoid because they don't know when they're going to get discovered. So the anxiety of a thief is in the wisdom of men. Oh my gosh. Somebody need to write that down. The anxiety of a thief is in the wisdom of men. The paranoia. The uneasiness. Thieves fret, they're worried. They have no confidence in God because they've been stealing from God and they live in a system that's opposite from God. And so they have to make sense of how they're going to survive according to flesh and blood, not according to the power of the Holy Ghost. The invisible account, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the glory of God doing something for you to save you provisionally. Now, the invisible account 
It worked for the life of the woman at Zarephath because she already had spoke that this was their last meal. They was going to die. But now supernatural money start moving in their direction because she sold into Elijah. Elijah was her invisible account. The prophet is the invisible account unveiled. They are rich soul. They are a chamber of changes. They are a typhoon of transformation. The woman at Zarephath, her invisible account was Elijah. So once Elijah had pleasure from her, the money just kept on coming to her. The secret was pleasuring Elijah. Elijah had a problem. He was starving. And she had the solution to the starvation. When she sold it, it looked like she was given what was all she possessed. But she was unlocking all that Jehovah possessed the invisible account. See, it looked like that's all that she knew about. Tashara, I saw a lot of angels around you. Tashara, there's a lot of angels around you. And the reason why, because the spirit of God said that he removing the spirit of quitting, the spirit of weariness off of you. There's chains of torment that you don't even recognize. Weariness and fatigue that's breaking off of you. It's not just you, it's your whole household. Because the spirit of God said that you the matriarch that connected to me. He said your whole household, the principality, break it off of the whole house. See, God said to Shah, you, you got to understand that you, 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 you dealing with uh, ancient familiar spirits from your mama and daddy, your, your mama and daddy. There's a whole track record of demonic worship that came through your line and God, he sent his begotten son to in infiltrate that bloodline to break, 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 break off all the mental torment, break off all the sinful background, every wrong relationship and surge into your house, fire of God surge into your house tonight. You and the devil got a tussle, but you about to win. I saw a lot of angels get dispatched. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Before I got on here, I saw, I saw a whole lot of angels get dispatched and went around to Shara, mainly her. But, but they're going to go around the daughters too. But, but she the matriarch. See, some of the stuff that I'm saying now is the spirit of God talking to you according to the election of grace. Meaning you, 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 a lot of stuff that I'm saying right now, if you look at your, your mindset, your attitude, how you approach things, all this stuff not going to add up. You're like, I, you know, I don't, I don't always do right prophet. But see, I ain't talking, I'm talking to you about the eternal scroll from heaven about your life. This in the libraries of heaven. This the whole purpose of the connectivity between me and you.
See, Tashara been sowing sacrificially. Her daughter's been sowing sacrificially. They don't got to tell me that. I'm scanning their life in prayer. See, a lot of you are, you, you ain't got to tell me stuff. I'm scanning your life in prayer because while we, while we, me and the Holy Ghost, me and the spirit of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, while me and the Holy Ghost are talking with each other, we talk about y'all. I'm talking about everybody that's connected to me. If you're not connected to me, I mean, I, 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 me and Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing to you. <laughs> We're not having no conversation about you. I'm real truthful with you. We're not talking. Well, I'm, we talk about people that's honoring us. That's what we talk about. Remember, Jesus told the woman that honored him. She sold sacrificially. And he said, wherever the gospel is preached, they're going to mention you. See, the whole gossip was about someone that was honoring. God don't be talking to, talking to people about you if you're not honoring him. You got to hear that raw anointing, man. If you're not pitting nothing out, you think God up there pitting stuff out for it to harvest? You ain't got no seed. He harvests your seed. He don't harvest your potential. Oh, somebody needs to write that down. Could you write that down? Write that down. Write that down. Most of my angels in Canada. Most The most angels I got on earth is in Canada right now. The most angels I got on earth, most of my partnership. Now, saints, this not this not just now. When I started off on Periscope, did you know it was my partners from Canada that bought me a car? My angels always go to Canada for some reason. That's their hot spot. That's their Wi-Fi. I saw a whole batch of angels before I got on here. Before I got on here, I was praying in tongues. I saw a whole batch of angels going to Canada. And you know what the Lord said? They going to go minister to your sowers in there. They going to go minister to your sowers in there. I got a minister right now in my ministry. One of my ministers, Malisha. Malisha experiencing miracles off of her sewing. One of my ministers, Malisha, is the top seller at her workplace right now. Again, she won top seller in a famine. And she been sewing strong. The seed is your advocate in troubled times. God not harvesting your potential. He harvesting your seed. The invisible account, it waits in a sower's life to creep up on them and pounce on them with provision. The invisible account is where God flexes his muscle to show you, I got you, baby. You thought you was going under? No, you're not. Saying some of y'all missed it. My story was I was sleeping inside my car. I had got to my wit's end and then God delivered me. Some of y'all don't really take the time to think about that. I had got down to my last $4. I was so strong. And then when it looked like everything about to go left, I got saved by the bell. I got saved by the bell. The bell was about to ring and I got it right on time. Money coming to me now. I got in right on time. It looked like it was all over, but I got saved by the bell. Noah got saved by the bell. It looked like the flood was about to overtake him, but he a sower. See, the invisible account is an ark. Everybody else look like they about to drown. But here come the lifeguard. Jesus, the son of God. Jesus of Nazareth. Walking on the water. Talking to the sea. Jesus. 
Jesus respond to those that honor him in the earth realm. And see what Jesus does through the Holy Ghost. He lodges himself in a teacher of the gospel. He lodges himself in a minister of the gospel. And when you honor Jesus, you recognize his presence. You recognize his word. You recognize his life. You recognize his kingdom showing up. And you take care of that body. You bless that body. You honor that body. You make that body experience pleasure from your honor, from your respect, from your value. Everything else is added unto you. Saints, the hundredfold is an invisible account. You go from looking like you're struggling to owning houses and lands. It's an invisible account. You look like you're going under financially to being the lender, and not the borrower. It's an invisible account. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's go ahead to verse 12. As a matter of fact, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11. It says, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. In the fruit of thy body. And in the fruit of thy cattle. Now cattle represent Possessions, provisions in the fruit of thy ground. That mean harvests. God say, I, I'm going to give you plenty harvests. I'm going to make you plenteous in goods. You know what goods mean? Money, jewelry, clothes, food, whatever you enjoy. I'm going to make you plenteous in goods. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11. The Lord, see, you got to caption this. Not the person trying to do witchcraft on you. It said the Lord. Not your family that rejected you, think you're crazy. It said the Lord. Not the person that wished you bad. It said the Lord. Not the Supreme Court Justice of America. It said the Lord. Not your prime minister, not your governor, not your mayor. It said the Lord. It says the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Saints, one thing I want to magnify with this invisible account. God want to minister the invisible account to those that develop their trust in him. See, you notice I use the word develop because you not you don't come into this world with a developed trust. You come into this world trying to grip an understanding. I need to do this so that I could be safe. But then Jesus come on the scene and the gospel will say, he that saved his life will lose it. But he that loses his life will find it in me. So obviously what Jesus, he giving you a signal, the way that I'm going to take you, not going to be the way that you would have did it in your common sense. I'm going to take you down a way that is called my kingdom of heaven. Give and it shall be given unto you. See, see, we, in the flesh, you want it shall be given unto me. Everybody wants that. Everybody will talk to you. You meet older people. You meet people in this life. They'll talk to you about the realm of it shall be given unto them. God promised me this. God about to do this. But they haven't mastered give. Saints, if you take a note, write this down. A non-sower is their own hindrance. <laughs> Let's go back here. A non-sower is their own hindrance. Because see, the non-sower is doing Satan's job for Satan. Satan already will to stop you, but Satan can't stop you underneath this new blood covenant unless you say yes to the stoppage. Satan can't stop you because what Jesus did at the cross, he has, 
he has violated and embarrassed Satan and took back the authority. So Satan needs you to sign your signature on the slave list. Satan needs you to sign your signature. And once you sign your signature, Satan say, you show? All right. And your life start looking like what Satan prophesied it would be. See, watch this here. If you don't believe the prophet that God sent to you, Satan become your prophet. So Satan's prophecies work. Saints, why did the children of Israel attack Moses? Because they believed the prophecy of Satan. Satan had told them, he brought you out here to die. So they said, you brought us out here to die. Satan had told them, Pharaoh treated y'all better. So they said, Pharaoh treated us better. And so they became Satan's prophets against the prophet that God had sent to their life. Money moving for me right now. Money moving for me right now. Money moving for me. Money cometh to me right now. See, the invisible account can't work for you if you trade your divine profit in for your flesh profit. Because see, your flesh going to talk to you about stuff that make you dishonorable. Your flesh going to talk to you about stuff that make you evil, that make you stubborn, that make you offended. See, the invisible account is the Lord making you plenteous in goods. So that means everything that you enjoy, that, that feel good to you. Goods is every, everything that make you feel good. He said that I'm going to make you plenteous in that. And then look what it says here in verse uh, 11. He said, I'm going to make you plenteous in cattle. I mean provision. I'm going to make you plenteous in the fruit of that ground. Let's talk about harvests. So what are you naming your seed? God saying, I'm going to make you plenteous in that. Never sow a seed without naming it. Never. And never sow a seed without telling the Lord, thank you. For the grace to sow and also the grace to reap what you named it. Thank the Lord for what you named the seed. Saints, there was a lot of things that I was sowing years ago. And I got it years ago. Because it was years ago when I started sowing. The harvest is guaranteed to come. You protect the harvest that's in route to you by remaining a harvest for God. You protect the harvest that's in route to you by remaining a harvest for God. That means keep on letting God enjoy you after you sow. Don't sow, then sin. Because sowing is not sinful. So once you sow, don't go reach for what your seed just beseeched. Your, every time you sow, your seed is rebuking your former life. Your unrenewed mind. Your seed is rebuking the devour from having leverage in your thoughts and emotions. Don't sow, then regrow the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't let it start taking root again. Saints, do you know that if you cut your tree off in your backyard, do you know it could grow again? Because trees can regrow. When you sow, don't return to what your seed just burnt. You just set it on fire through your passion for God. Don't reacquaint yourself with what you just eradicated through sowing. Remember, sowing is an altar. That's why if you look at the life of Elijah, 
When his altar, he sowed on that altar and the fire of God came, it devoured the seed, right? Well, this is a revelation. You got to be on the altar with your seed so that it could devour you too. So that what remains that's not of God could be burnt in that devouring. Now, saints, you notice the fire of God devoured Elijah's seed on that altar. Now, saints, there is the devourer that Malachi was talking about. He'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So I want you to catch this. God wants to be the one devouring the seed that you have sown up to him. God has no pleasure in seeing the devourer, this illegal spirit, satanic king, come and devour you. Because God has to watch you letting a wrong devouring take place. That's the wrong, that's an illegal devouring taking place. The accurate devouring is the five God being able to fall on your sowing. Now, saints, when the fire of God saw, uh, fall on your sowing, it burns up your poverty. It burns up your sicknesses and diseases. When the fire of God falls on your sowing, it burns up every false verdict. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Remember, when the prophets of Baal experienced that, they saw that fire fall. Remember, the fire also was signifying to them, I come to burn up your verdicts, what you've been prophesying. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Your sickness and disease could be a prophet, a bell verdict. That's Satan attempting to dictate what type of health you're going to have in this life. Dictate what type of finances you're going to have in this life. So you got to catch this. The fire of God will work for you and team up for you when you're sowing to burn up every verdict that came from the prophets of Baal. Somebody in this line, on this line right now, the prophets of Baal and all their prophecy is being burnt up right now. Every verdict that Satan want to discuss and release about your finances, your body, your mentality, your relationship is being burnt up right now in the name of Jesus. Say, my money is loose right now in Jesus' name. Say, my money is loose right now in the name of Jesus. Say, my money is loose right now in the name of Jesus. My money is loosed in the name of Jesus. I'm sowing my way out and I'm reaping my way in. I'm sowing my way out. Somebody write me that. I'm sowing my way out. I'm reaping my way in. I'm sowing my way out. I'm reaping my way in. I'm sowing my way out. I'm reaping my way in. Money coming to me now. I'm sowing my way out. I'm reaping my way in. I'm choosing to use a weapon of war called seed. And I got another weapon that's going to respond to me called harvest. I'm sowing my way out and reaping my way in. Father, I praise you for the harvest is coming to my life. I'm showing you how to talk. Father, I praise you for the increase coming to my life. Father, I praise you for being so good to me. Lord, thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for holding me down, lifting me up, protecting me, shielding me with favor. Thank you for opening doors that no man can shut. Thank you for shutting doors that no man can open. Lord, thank you for protecting me. I receive everything that I name my seed. My harvest is coming towards me. My miracles is coming towards me. Money is coming towards me. I receive the abundance of God. I'm a receiver of his abundance. I'm a receiver of his increase. I'm a receiver of overflow. I'm a receiver of debt cancellation. I'm a receiver of the minister of finances and his ministry. I'm a receiver of the invisible account. The invisible account is being supplied to me. Father, thank you for supplying me more than I ever had. Thank you for taking good care of me. Father, thank you for pouring out your love on me. 
Hallelujah. According to Psalm 103, I am crowned with your loving kindness and tender mercy. Father, thank you for pouring out your love on me. Thank you for blessing me. Lord, I received Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11. Thank you for making me plenteous in goods. Lord, thank you for making me plenteous in the fruit of my body. Lord, thank you for restoring health back unto me. Thank you for restoring my health back unto me. Lord, I receive a harvest of health. Lord, thank you for restoring my wisdom back unto me. Thank you for restoring my knowledge back unto me. Thank you for giving me light in my eyes, light in my brain, light in my thoughts, light in my behavior, light in my conduct. Father, thank you for restoring back angelic ministry in my life. Thank you for restoring back angelic ministry in my life. Thank you for restoring back my financial situation. I received the blessing of Abraham. Father, thank you for restoring back the plan that you had for me before I screwed it up. Thank you. I receive it right now. I'm restored. I'm reconciled back to the blood covenant. I'm reconciled back to the blood of Jesus. I'm reconciled back to the goodness of God, the blessing of God, the wealth of God, the grace of God. Lord, thank you for making all grace abound towards me. Thank you for making all grace abound towards me. I receive from the invisible account of God. I receive provision from the invisible account of God. I receive from the invisible account of God. I receive from the invisible account of God. I receive financial favor. I receive justice in my life. Every seed that I'm sowing, I walk in divine justice. God is fighting my battles because I am a sower. God is healing my body because I am a sower. And he sees my seed. He sees my honor. Doors are coming open for me. Opportunities are chasing me down. The blessing is overtaking me. God is making ways. God is showing up for me. God is delivering me. God is restoring the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar. I receive in restoration from God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh is ministering to my life. I receive all petitions being granted unto me. I'm being restored. My soul is being restored. My money is being restored. My mind is being restored. My body is being restored. My whole being is underneath miracle power. My whole being is underneath miracle power. I'm giving you apostolic vibrations. I'm giving you apostolic vibrations on this line. My whole body is underneath miracle power. I receive due season. Due season. Everything that I desire is coming to me. All things are working together for my good. I receive due season. The hundredfold return is returning to me. I receive due season. I will not be visited with evil. I receive due season. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I receive due season. The Lord shall cause my cup to run over. I receive due season. The Lord has made me the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I receive due season. I shall have more than enough. I am a financial witness for God. I am a business partner of the great God Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.